Fag and Thomas, two servants who work for the younger Absolute and Sir Anthony Absolute, respectively, run into each other on the streets of Bath. Thomas reveals that his master has brought his entire household to town suddenly. Fag says that he doesn't work for Jack Absolute now, but rather he works for a new master named Ensign Beverly. And then he goes on to explain that Beverly and Absolute are one and the same person. Beverly is just a fake identity chosen by Absolute in order to court a young and beautiful girl called Lydia Languish. Lydia Languish is staying with her guardian Mrs. Malaprop, and in her dressing room, she and Lucy, the maid, discuss the novels that Lucy has secured for Lydia to read. Unexpectedly, Lydia's cousin, Julia, enters. Julia has just arrived in Bath with her guardian, Sir Anthony. Lydia and Julia talk about their love affairs and how Lydia has been restricted from meeting her lover, Beverly, when Mrs. Malaprop found out about it. Mrs. Malaprop doesn't feel an ensign. An ensign is the lowest rank of officer in the British Army, would be a suitable match for her young and beautiful niece, Lydia. But all the while, Mrs. Malaprop herself has been having a secret affair and has been writing letters under the name Delia to Sir Lucius, an Irish baronet. Julia also doesn't seem to think a poor ensign is an appropriate match for Lydia. But Lydia is ready to give up nearly two thirds of her fortune to marry the ensign. Julia finds this silly, but Lydia retorts that Julia's own fiance's jealousy is even more ridiculous. Julia's fiance is Falkland. Julia, however, defends Falkland, stating that he does it merely out of his love for her. A little later, Sir Anthony arrives at Mrs. Malaprop's house, and both of them scold Lydia for her affair with Beverly. Sir Anthony blames Lydia's behavior upon reading. He believes it is better for girls to stay illiterate, and on hearing this, Mrs. Malaprop starts making a confused and distorted speech about the appropriate areas of study for young ladies. She uses sophisticated and complicated language to impress Sir Anthony, but ends up sounding more ridiculous. Sir Anthony leaves the topic, and they both then discuss ways to make Lydia and Sir Anthony's son. Absolute engaged to each other. After Sir Anthony exits, Mrs. Malaprop starts wondering about her own affair with Sir Lucius, and she starts worrying over how Lydia found out about it. She asks the maid, Lucy, whether it is she who told Lydia about her love affair with Sir Lucius. Lucy, however, denies this. On hearing this, Mrs. Malaprop is convinced, and she hands Lucy another letter for Sir Lucius. When left alone. Lucy wonders of all the profits she's made out of these love affairs. She's received many tips and gifts for delivering letters for these lovers. At the same time, Lucy has tricked Sir Lucius to believe that the letters he received were from Lydia and not from Mrs. Malaprop. Lucy knew that Sir Lucius wouldn't be interested in the old Mrs. Malaprop, and hence did this to continue gaining tips from these affairs. Meanwhile, Absolute discusses with his servant Fag about how to keep his affair with Lydia, as Beverly, a secret from his father, Sir Anthony. Julia's fiance, Falkland, enters and suggests Absolute to go and ask Mrs. Malaprop and Sir Anthony for Lydia's hand in marriage. Absolute doesn't seem to think it is a good idea, as he feels Lydia wouldn't be interested in him once she finds out that he's rich. Falkland talks of his worries and how insecure he feels when Julia is away. Absolute tries to convince Falkland, saying that Julia is in Bath and she's keeping quite well. He urges Falkland to stay on a bit longer as he is expecting Acres, a neighbor of the Absolutes in the countryside, to visit him at any moment. Acres is unaware of Julia and Falkland being engaged, so when Acres steps in and is asked about Julia. He says that Julia is indeed in perfect health and is quite a charming person who pleases everyone she meets. On hearing this, Falkland feels extremely jealous and walks out of the room. Acres is also unaware of Absolute's relation with Lydia and so goes on to describe his attempts at courting the beautiful Lydia. A while later, Absolute's father arrives and makes it clear that Absolute could make his fortune simply by marrying the lady chosen by his father. Absolute admits that he is already in love and refuses to marry anyone else. Sir Anthony is enraged, 
he curses Absolute and leaves the place. In the meantime, Lucy delivers Mrs. Malaprop's letter, signed by Delia, to Sir Lucius, and Fag sees this. After Sir Lucius leaves, Fag, acting as the servant of Beverly, threatens Lucy by telling her that he is going to tell Ensign Beverly that Lucy is also acting on behalf of Sir Lucius. Lucy blurts out that the letters are actually from Mrs. Malaprop. Lucy informs him that Sir Anthony has proposed his son, Absolute, as a suitable match for Lydia, and it is Absolute who is the true enemy of Beverly. F.A. joyfully runs off to tell Absolute that his father is forcing him to marry the same woman he is in love with. On learning this, Absolute finds his father on the North Parade and rushes off to promise him that he would marry any woman his father commands him to, regardless of her age or her beauty. While Sir Anthony is pleased at this obedience, he finds it disgusting that Absolute is least bothered about his future wife's beauty. Julia finds Faulkner waiting for her at her lodgings. When she comes in, she asks Falkland why he doesn't seem excited to see her, to which he replies with indifference. He accuses her of being happy and jolly during his absence, and she justifies herself, saying she merely puts on a happy face to convince her friends. Although he is reassured temporarily, he further expresses his doubts about her sincerity towards him, and Julia runs off crying. Jack Absolute decides to pay Mrs. Malaprop and impresses her with his appearance and his flattering of Mrs. Malaprop. She pulls out a letter from Beverly, from Absolute himself in reality, addressed to Lydia, and they both read it together. In the letter, Beverly makes fun of Mrs. Malaprop's pretentious use of language, which seems ridiculous, and also challenges to meet Lydia by making Mrs. Malaprop herself become a mediator between them. Sneering at Beverly's cheek for such a suggestion, he asks Mrs. Malaprop whether he may meet Lydia. Mrs. Malaprop calls Lydia and leaves them both alone. Lydia is shocked to see Beverly and is pleased at the fact that he has cleverly deceived her aunt. Mrs. Malaprop eavesdrops their conversation but misinterprets the talk and thinking that Lydia has rejected Absolute, she interferes and asks Lydia to leave the room. Meanwhile, Sir Lucius arrives at Sir Acres' lodgings and Acres reveals that he has arrived in Bath to court the young Lydia who is now being courted by someone else called Beverly. Sir Lucius convinces Acres to enter into a duel with Beverly. Acres then sends the letter of challenge to Beverly in the hands of Absolute as he knew that Absolute and Beverly knew each other. Mrs. Malaprop praises Absolute to Lydia, and Lydia too agrees to this praise, thinking it is Beverly who her aunt met earlier. When Sir Anthony arrives with his son Captain Absolute, Lydia refuses to even look at Absolute's face. But she is surprised that her aunt cannot recognize that the man she met earlier and this Absolute are two different men. Absolute refuses to speak initially, saying he is too nervous. But then realizing that he would be found out soon anyway, he speaks to Lydia, at which she exclaims, Beverly, on hearing his voice. Mrs. Malaprop and Sir Anthon think that Lydia has gone out of her mind, but then later on realize that Absolute has tricked them all. Sir Anthony, however, is glad to find out that Absolute isn't indifferent to his wife's beauty after all. Mrs. Malaprop is obviously angry at Absolute for writing such a letter mocking her, but Sir Anthony convinces her that they must leave the young couple alone. Lydia is enraged at this deception and states that she would not marry him. Absolute walks out of the North Parade, talking under his breath about all his hopes being destroyed. On spotting him, Sir Lucius challenges him to a duel. Absolute tries to understand Lucius' reasons but is unable to extract anything from him and blindly agrees to duel Lucius that very night. Absolute then runs into Falkland and asks him to be his second in the duel. A servant arrives with a letter from Julia to Falkland. In the letter, Julia forgives Falkland for his bad behavior and this further anger Falkland as he thought it was improper of her to forgive before he even asked for forgiveness. He tells Absolute that he just cannot listen to any more of the problems that Absolute is inventing for himself and leaves. Falkland believes the duel will give him an opportunity to prove the sincerity of Julia's love for him. Falkland pretends to Julia that he has killed someone in a duel and must escape to England. 
He comes to bid her goodbye before leaving, but she is determined to elope with him. Falkland reminds her that they have very little money and that he may become even more argumentative, but Julia still insists that she wants to be with him. Ecstatic at having proved the sincerity of Julia's love, he admits that he merely made up the whole story of the duel and this makes Julia angry. She refuses to marry him now. After a while, Lydia comes in looking for Julia and she tells Julia about Absolute's deception after which Julia confesses that Falkland has already told her about it. This angers Lydia but then she starts remembering about all the romantic moments she and Beverly shared together. Julia however is in no mood to stand all this drama so she asks Lydia to be practical and reasonable and not destroy a potentially successful marriage. Fag and Mrs. Malaprop enters and informs the ladies that Absolute, Falkland, Sir Lucius and Akers are about to be engaged in a duel. All of them immediately rush off to attempt to put a stop to it. Despite Absolute trying to hide the fact of the duel from his father, Sir Anthony still gets to know about it from David and they too rush off to stop the men. Akers and Sir Lucius are found waiting for their dueling opponents in a place nearby town called the King's Mead Fields. When Falkland and Absolute reach finally, Sir Lucius assumes Falkland is Beverly but Akers realizes that neither of them are Beverly. Sir Lucius asks Akers to fight Falkland anyway instead of Beverly but Akers refuses and Absolute takes this chance to admit that Beverly was a false identity that he himself had invented and so he would fight Akers in Beverly's place. When Akers still refuses Sir Lucius calls him a coward and he begins fighting Absolute. All the other characters rush in at this point and Sir Anthony demands an explanation for why his son is fighting. But nobody replies and Mrs. Malaprop exploits the opportunity to make Lydia tell Absolute that she still loves him. When Lydia remains silent, Sir Lucius says he can give an explanation for her silence. At this moment Lydia breaks her silence and says that she loves Absolute. Sir Lucius is shocked and he produces a love letter from Delia, and asks Lydia if she has written it which Lydia obviously denies. Mrs. Malaprop admits that it is she who wrote those letters in the name of Delia. Sir Lucius is obviously not interested in marrying the old Mrs. Malaprop and so all confusions regarding identity finally comes to an end here in this last scene. Sir Anthony suggests Julia to marry Falkland and assures her that his jealous nature would probably improve after marriage. And so Julia and Falkland get reconciled. Akers promises to throw a party for the newly engaged couples and the play ends.